the last episode of Tech Tuesday of all time. For reals this time. I try to read past all the teardrops on my teleprompter. <laughs> I might tear up. I just, I don't know if I can get through it. Number five. So Infinity Ward may no longer be the team for Call of Duty, but someone must still be left at Activision who knows how to make the excellent maps that COD is known for. The resurgent map pack came out last week with five maps, two flashback maps, Vacant and Strike, and three new ones, Carnival, Trailer Park, and Fuel. Now, I personally think that they should give us all the old COD 4 maps cheap if you already own the game because I already paid for the maps they're giving you a flashback once, but I digress. Carnival is by far the best of the new maps. It's big, like the size of Wasteland big, but unlike Wasteland that is a wasteland, it's totally filled with different rundown rides and attractions offering tons of variety and places to hide. Trailer Park is a smaller map with tight indoor locations much like Vacant. The Flashback Strike is one of my favorite levels from last time, and Vacant is still wildly popular with grenade spammers. This bundle should easily hold you over for the next few months or until they release another pack to get another 15 of your hard earned dollars. I would place my bets on that second option. Number four. AT&T is up to its evil ways again. They may have been beaten back by the Verizon map ads, but consider this the Empire Strikes Back of the saga. AT&T decided that unlimited data plans weren't what iPhone users wanted. $30 for all the data you can use was a waste of money for users. Instead, those users would rather spend $25 a month to get only two gigs. Such a better deal. Oh, by the way, the $30 unlimited data for the iPad 3G is also gone, just so you know. I know this is really making everyone on AT&T's day, but it gets better. The tethering ability that is offered with the iPhone will now cost you $20 a month. You don't get any more data, the same two gigs for $25, then add an additional $20 just to have the privilege of tethering. The only way to avoid this new helpful plan system is to buy an AT&T device now, get the unlimited plans, and then never switch plans or phones ever again. And now to ruin the days of the people who are laughing at those iPhone users because they have a droid. It's very likely that Verizon and other cell phone providers will do the same basic plan change because it's the best way to make more money while eliminating their need to increase their network's quality to handle all the new smartphones. I can only hope that the return of the Jedi part of this saga comes soon as customers rise up and leave AT&T. Or maybe it will just jump to the Phantom Menace and we will all be disappointed and angry at the same time. Number three. E3 2010 is coming up in just a few weeks and expect to hear tons of gaming rumors and news leading up and during the event. It's basically the biggest event of gaming if you didn't already know, so the big three will release all the previews of their new games and tech, and developers will drop hints and first looks at their new games scheduled for the next year. Some rumors already spreading are of the PSP2, Natal finally getting a release date, and a 3D PS3, plus previews of Zelda games, Gears 3, Killzone 3, Infamous 2, Call of Duty Black Ops, and even more AAA games, as well as announcements for new IPs and sequels that we haven't even heard about yet. I suggest hanging around G4 for the week of the announcements to get all of the news you need, since I won't be around to summarize it all for you. I also suggest you start saving your money now for all the junk you're going to be wanting afterwards. Number two, Apple's biggest event of the year, the WWDC, just happened yesterday. But seeing as this is being filmed just a few hours before the actual event, I can't really tell you what happened. So trusting my tireless study of Apple rumors, I can say that the iPhone 4 has been announced, as well as a full version of the 4.0 OS. Also something about Safari 5 and iAds. On the hardware side, MacBook Airs, MacBook Pros, Mac Minis, and Apple TV are all likely to get a refresh of some sort. Hopefully Apple TV will get more than a refresh, but a total overhaul. Steve Jobs is also probably going to make a stab at Gizmodo for breaking the secrecy of their latest phone, and then have the VP sum up something about how their products are awesome and they sell lots of stuff. I may be wrong about those actual gadgets, but I know these last two guesses are 100% correct. And number one, the most important story is of course the end of this series. Yes, I'm that conceited that I would put my own show at the top of the countdown of my own show. I run it after all, who's gonna stop me? No more Tech Tuesday and I haven't picked a successor, so as of now, you're all out of luck for tech updates once a week. Sorry everyone, I may miss it as much as you. Okay, that was a lie, I, I probably won't miss it at all. Thanks all you viewers for support over the last two seasons. I'm honestly surprised most days that high schoolers have the enough attention to watch this whole thing and actually take in information, seeing as I can barely pay attention to the announcements myself and I work on the crew. Now over the last few years, I've had quite a few people ask if they could get a shout out on my segment to of course make them instantly cool. Well, now that it's over, I guess I'll give in and throw some shout outs. Outs. Did you catch all those? Okay, good. Some want to kiss, some want to kick you. This has been Tech Tuesday. I've been Liam Spohr. I'll see you around. Now I'm off to star in a reality show spin-off of a dating game based on Tech Tuesday. That is where the real money is on TV.